You know, for the longest time, Lisa Ray wasn't the kind of person who wanted to stay put for long. She grew up in the Toronto suburbs, the only child of a Polish mother and a Bengali Indian father. When she was 16, she went to Bombay, now Mumbai, got discovered by an agent and became one of India's top cover models. Not surprisingly, the offers from Bollywood started to pour in and Lisa did appear in a number of films. The uh, great Deepad Mehta took notice of this one, Kasur. And when Lisa returned home looking for work that was a little more meaningful to her, she actually found a willing partner in Deepa, who cast her in the Oscar-nominated picture Water. Then, in 2009, not long after her mother passed away, Lisa was diagnosed with a rare, incurable form of cancer, multiple myeloma. It shook her to the core, literally. The disease affects white blood cells and bone marrow, but after months of aggressive chemo, steroid treatments, and stem cell therapy, Lisa pulled through. Now throughout, she wrote a blog to share her cancer experiences, and now with a new outlook on life, Lisa is an advocate of stem cell research. She's got a new gig on Top Chef Canada. It is my pleasure to introduce our new host, Lisa Ray. That's awesome. My entire family is gonna lose their when they find out it's Lisa Ray. Bollywood Hollywood, are you kidding me? Like, they're gonna go nuts. Lisa's looking to finally settle down, and while she's now well into remission, her recovery has been anything but easy. Hey, everybody, please welcome back to the show, Lisa Ray! <laughs> oh, nice. How are you? Oh, great. Nice to see you. Oh, uh, awesome to see you. Back in the red chair. Back in the red chair? Yeah. Well, it's not like anything's happened since then. No, 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 of course not. It's like I never left. <laughs> My entire life has gone through some crazy upheaval since then. Yeah. Before we get to that, I just want to talk about the Top Chef thing for a sec. I think it's really fascinating that a woman who is a model and an actress, uh, it, which is an industry that doesn't really like food. Is taking a big bite out of food these days, yeah. right? Well, you know, I was sitting around looking for meaty rolls. And it just so happened that I found one, but in a very different way. Um, so, you know, it's about bringing together, actually, you know, like people, food, good times. For me, food spells good times. It spells love and it spells life. And that's what I'm celebrating right now. You know, the Grateful Dead it's once juicy. said, what a long, strange trip it's been for you, and it hasn't even been that long. Health what are you talking about, talked about We're no. not talking about food anymore. No, no we are. <laughs> no, but just this idea that here you are, and this is this, is this new lease on life that you have. Yeah. But, man, you really you really got put through the ringer. You, I mean, you had a, a diagnosis of a rare form of cancer, yeah. especially in yeah. a young woman. I mean, what has this just been like for you? 2009, I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. Which and usually happens in, in people who are older, right? Yeah, I was 37 when I was diagnosed. Um, but it's normally people are in their 60s, late 60s, who are diagnosed. So of course, I had to get that kind of cancer, right? There's, there's got to be some sort of a reason embedded in everything. Um, and I have made it, obviously, my mission to share and spread awareness on multiple myeloma. You know, I did a, a, a national campaign which was called Making Myeloma Matter. And the reason for that is because, technically, it's incurable. So there is a very good chance. I don't like to necessarily talk about it a lot just because I, I don't believe that I need to manifest this, but there's a good chance that at some point I'll relapse yeah. and I'll have to go back on alternative treatment. But what's encouraging is that right now the average lifespan of a patient of multiple myeloma has gone from two years to ten. And hopefully, possibly more. So it's really about buying time, getting the right drugs um, out there, getting the right cocktail of treatments and protocol. And we're, we're making great strides in, in Canada specifically. There's a couple of um, really life-saving treatments that have been recently um, approved for the provincial formulary mm -hmm. in Canada. And it's a very interesting and complex process. So obviously, I've become quite an advocate for that because it's in my interest. It's keeping me alive. That's why I'm sitting here today. That and a combination um, of a stem cell transplant, right. which is another magnificent um, life-changing therapy that I can't stop talking about because stem cell technology and research started in Toronto 50 years ago. Right. How were you emotionally and intellectually equipped to deal with it? Some people, uh, I mean, it's obviously so de terrifying, but yeah. how was that, trend, that, that, that sort of that process for you it's like you don't know it's like right like it's you got to put the you got to put the tea bag in the hot water and you just don't know how strong it's going to be but i mean i done a little bit of preparation maybe along the way and co completely coincidentally because i had been studying meditation along the way uh, for a number of years actually leading up to my diagnosis and here's the real the real irony is that um my mom passed away um 
uh, a couple of months before I was diagnosed. So right. talk about like that was not a good year. <laughs> but um, I so I ended up taking my mom's ashes with my father back to India. It was half of them we spread in Lake Ontario, and the other half we traveled across the world with her urn to spread them in the ocean in India. And while I was in India, I did a meditation retreat. I took my father because I felt that it was really important for my father. He had lost his life partner, so um, we checked into a meditation retreat. And I thought I'm just going to take whatever course is running simultaneously. And it turned out to be a course in death and dying. Ooh. That's preparation. <laughs> you don't even know about that. <laughs> so we, I, I, in a sense, there was a strange kind of preparation that I did. I don't wish it upon anyone else, but for me, I really do feel that it kind of helped tap into or access these certain resources in myself that I never thought I had that um, you don't necessarily want to actually have to access, but you know that they're there. They're there inside you. Is the cloud broken? above you? Do you feel like, I mean, like you oh, said, yeah. completely? Yeah, absolutely. I laughed all through my treatment. I really a, feel that a, that was really important. As a mechanism to survive? or Absolutely as a mechanism to survive. Um, I was certainly in denial for a certain period of time. I mean, there's certain stages that you go through in your treatment. But now at the other end of it, I have nothing but joy. I just have a simple wish. And I've just realized really the whole secret of life because I was so full of angst for so many years of my life. Like, what does it all mean? Oh, it's, it's just to be happy. That's a great place to be, isn't it? That's it. It's so simple. And whatever you need to do, as long as you're not harming someone else, yeah. it's such a simple message. And at the same time, it's about going back, investing in others, um, sharing community. I think it really, everyone should have it. Right. It's only because it's the greatest reset button that you're ever going to press in your life. Right. Stick around. More conversation with uh, Lisa Ray. But also, I'm going to throw some anthropology questions her way. You know, there was a time when she did Bollywood. We're going to find a little bit about that I love right Bollywood. after this. As you can probably tell, we have a live studio audience. I'd love it if you would join us. Go to strombo.com slash tickets for more. Lisa in that video. <laughs> You're in that video. <laughs> I'm in that video. Where do you guys get this stuff? We have a, our team is our That's family the thing, here. These days, there are no secrets. You're, no secrets. You are about 24 at the time. That was like 1996, I think, when yeah, that, when that yeah. came out. Are you kidding? I, I embrace that part of my life. That's, that's what's put me in this seat here today. So, you know, my career started in India at the age of 16. Loved it. It was a great phase of my life. And, uh, and you know, this is, this is the new me. This is actually Lisa 2.0. Oh, 2.0. It's a 2.0 version right now. Very so exciting. I love looking back on the 1.0, but, you know, new and improved. All right, let's go back to some, uh, some anthropology here. What's one dance move that every actor in a Bollywood musical needs to learn first? <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's all in the hips. Is it? Yes. It is pelvic thrusts. Oh. <laughs> Got that. You Covered. put that down. Covered. I have seen some of his pelvic thrusts. <laughs> in what's, public. That's right, public. In public. What, speaking of, what's your favorite word that sounds reproductive but isn't? Mine is Volvo. <laughs> Answer that. I wouldn't even know how to answer that question. <laughs> I'll spray it's, it. It's, it's too factual for me. Is it too close? Yeah, it's All right. too factual. So, okay, I've never been engaged. You're engaged. Sell me on the concept. Ah! Okay. So, here's how you know you should get engaged, okay? okay? You're at a self-development course in Napa Valley. Gorgeous. Okay? Obviously, Fridays for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> Your man, he shows up on the day that your course ends. You have the worst case of pink eye you've ever had in your life. I'm talking about this eye is sealed shut and leaking pus, okay? He picks you up, takes you to the emergency. You get some eye drops. You go back to this glorious, beautiful hotel, change into robes, sit down, crack open a great bottle of wine. I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know, I really think we should take our relationship to the next level. <laughs> What do you think? Were you, were you testing him at the time? I, I swear I had no clue that he had this rock. This rock. Do you, you, you want to zoom in on that? 
We don't you have don't, to zoom in. The thing's huge. You don't need to zoom in. But of course, it had to be huge. I couldn't see it out of my right <laughs> eye. <laughs> So anyway, so he popped the question, in spite and despite all of my Wearing a robe, sealed Wearing the shut eye. A eye sealed shut, kind of, you know, drooling lightly. Um, <laughs> it was meant to be. That's how, and that's how you know. It's about getting real, it's being in your robe, and, and knowing that you, you want to still wake up and see <laughs> that person the next day. Did you cry when he asked? I was hysterical. He had planned on popping the question the next day, but because I had kind of given him this great opening, he dashed into the next room. Given him a great opening or forced the issue, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which is another way to, to phrase tick -tock, it. Tick-tock, tick-tock. <laughs> so he comes running back into the room, and I was like, okay, that's good. He came back, you know, <laughs> it was kind of weird. And he said, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? So here, we're rehearsing now. Hey. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure, baby? Lisa, are you sure? Are you sure, George? Are Lisa, you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Is it like that? Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Every girl should be proposed to twice. Right. At I least, think so. you know? And I said, yes, I wouldn't say it otherwise. And he reached into his robe and he pulled out this box and he opened it and there's this blinding flash and I started screaming. It's one of those moments that you can't anticipate. And I have to tell you, I am not that girl. I am not that girl that's, you know, all kind of say I'm not that I girl. I am not that girl. You had one I eye shut and you were girl. like saying, pop the question. I'm not that girl. I was the girl who's like, you know, we could, we could just go to City Hall and I don't want the ring and everything like that. And then I saw it and I was like, give it to me. <laughs> give it to me. And, you know, and I started screaming and crying and I carried on like I was hysterical for uh, honestly an entire 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the Bollywood actress in me, of course, <laughs> melodrama. And, um, and then he, he went, and your answer is? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I have something else. I'm sorry, yeah, I can't help it. This is so awesome. Inside, there is an inscription. Right. What does that say? Which you may not be able to see, but it is actually in Bengali, mm -hmm. which is my father's native language. Right. And it says, I love you always. So that's the thing, then I was hysterical all over again after that. I was on the floor. It's layers of drama. Mouth frothing, just layer after layer. It was nonstop. Are you sure it was pink eye if your mouth was frothing? <laughs> you know, to, to be... I'm, whatever it was, I'm cured now. To, to, be, to be an actress and to be a model, um, uh, the, the age 40 is something that scares most people. But mm -hmm. to be a cancer graduate, what does 40 mean to you? 40 is the best freaking year ever ever of my life, ever. Um, it, like I said, it literally is Lisa 2.0, celebrating life, um, celebrating the best things in life. And, um, and I really feel that, you know, it's not just about having gained a hell of a lot of experience and knowledge and wisdom along the way. It's really about also, like, letting go. Letting go of a lot of our pretensions and self-consciousness and the angst and all the stuff that, you know, all the unnecessary baggage. So yeah. this is the best year ever, and I'm, I'm so happy to see you in my 40th year. It's a pleasure to see you. Just Lisa Ray, everybody. Thank Watch you. her on Top Chef Canada. It airs on Food Network Canada. We'll be right back. Thank Thank you. You.